Hey, Billy Glissman with PowerCore 360, talking about baseball power hitting, how to increase your power. Today's subject is we're really going to talk about the setup of the ready position in the box. What you do with your feet, your body, your hips can make or break your swing and can make or break your power. So when you step into the box, there needs to be a routine you have that you just rep and rep and rep, and it's there every time you take a swing. All right, so let's talk about a few different things. First thing we're going to talk about the back foot. So if I'm working with a hitter, I want them to step into the box. And if we look at the front part of the plate here, I want this back foot to make sure that my right foot for right-handed hitter is parallel with the front of the plate. Oftentimes you'll see hitters step in and their foot's turned out like there. And so basically what's going to happen is that's going to cause them to lose power. We want this back foot turned straight ahead, right? So we want them, I'm just going to rep it, rep it, rep it with them. They step into the box with their back foot, and then when, as they're setting up there, they're looking to see that it's parallel with the front part of that plate. That's step one. Step two, their hips need to be backwards. I'm going to give you a side view. If I was hitting here and the pitcher was straight ahead here, oftentimes you'll see a lot of hitters come in here and do this. Their knees come forward, right? And so they end up loading their quad muscles, which is part of hitting, but what happens is, the muscles on the back side, more importantly, your glutes, your hip and butt muscles, and your hamstrings really aren't doing much. They're just hanging out. In fact, you can try this. Do this, let your knees come forward. You'll feel the tension in your quads, but if you put your hands back on your hamstrings and glutes, they are just soft. They're a huge part of the rotational and linear power in your hitting, so let's learn how to use them. So what we're going to do is when we step into the box, we get that back foot set up parallel. And the first thing we're going to do is sit back into our hips. We're going to take our hips backwards, not our knees forward. We're going to take our hips backwards. That does two things predominantly. Number one, it takes us back into our hips and hamstrings, right? The other thing it does is it creates space out here for us to be able to turn through and swing. If we're doing this, then we're kind of losing some space out here. Um, so number one, line up the back foot. Number two, take your hips and load it back into your hips and butt muscles. Weight on the inside of the back foot. So if we go through this in order, I step in, I take my hips back. How I set up the weight and really the pressure in my back foot is make or break. What I want to have happen is I want to be able to get my weight over my back leg. But it's not over the middle part of the foot, it's on the inside of the foot. So if I look at the right inside of my foot, my right knee ought to be just right over the top of that. And my right hip ought to be over the top of that. So I'm set up and lined up with my weight over the inside of that right foot. Watch, because one of the things I see with young athletes that come in with wore out shoes, they come in with the soft, like really relaxed, cushiony soles, that's a killer to try to train because what happens is the foot rolls out. We don't want the foot rolling out. I want that back foot, that right foot, turning in. And it's almost like I'll talk to them about, if, if you were mad at me and I stuck my fingers underneath your shoe, you were mad at me, what would you do? Well, you'd turn that weight inside and try to pinch my fingers into the ground. I want that same thing, step into the box, hips back, load that weight inside that right foot, stack the knee and the hip over each other, right over the, the inside of that right back foot. That's critical because we're gonna load up this back side and we're really anchoring into the ground to be able to push into the ground. The ground's gonna push us back and it's gonna help us start to perform the linear motions of the legs and the hips to start to swing and hit with power. All right, um, one of the things that we do, and you'll see it in some of the other videos as you follow up after this one, we're gonna talk about adding a hop. So once I step in here and I take my hips back, instead of just sitting down into my hips, we train this, we train them to hop down into their hips. When you do that, you may all of a sudden feel some tension on the front and side and back of the hips. The hips are really critical that we load them as well. The muscles in there, we want load and tension in them. So we're gonna do everything we've been doing. We're gonna step in, get that back foot set up, and rather than just sit back into the hips, we're gonna hop back into the hips, and that tension we create, we're gonna hold it there as we get ready to perform the swing, right? But we're creating and holding that tension. That hop is critical for that. If we can feel this, then we can start to rep it. And if we can rep it, we can build it into muscle memory. So it's there automatically. But I would tell you, it's really important for you to go through and just rep and rep and rep this. 
really discipline yourself to do this. This is the foundation for power hitting for the body, the hips, the legs, and all the linear rotational components to happen with power, force, and speed. Don't skip on this, critically important. If you like this video, like it down below. Subscribe to our channel if you want further information about our products, our programs, services, or training. Go to PowerCore360.com.